Welcome to our educational video. This video has been developed by the New Futures Global Health Group, whose aim is to improve women's and children's health worldwide through innovation and education. If you'd like to know more about our work or indeed support us, please visit this website link. Your bed options after a caesarean section includes trial of vaginal birth after caesarean section or an elective caesarean section. We'll be talking about the benefits and risk of each option, the indications and the process involved. Making a decision about birth after previous caesarean section is like planning a very important journey. When planning this journey, you may want to revisit previous experiences, your current situation, and desired way to give birth. There may be challenges and unexpected diversions en route, but we will help you be as prepared as possible. In the UK, one in four to five women give birth by caesarean section. Worldwide, the incidence of caesarean section is also increasing. Therefore, more women are faced with the decision of birth after caesarean section. Vaginal birth after caesarean section, also known as VBAC, can be a spontaneous vaginal birth or an assisted birth with forceps or ventus. Giving birth by the vaginal route is like climbing the mountain yourself. It may be longer and hard work, but when you reach the top of the mountain, when you give birth, some feel an immense sense of achievement by taking this route. Women who have had a previous caesarean section will give birth vaginally 60 to 80% of the time. VBAC would be recommended for most women who have had one previous caesarean section pregnant with a single baby, which is cephalic, meaning head down. If you fall outside this group and you would like a vaginal birth, you should discuss this on an individual basis with your obstetrician or specialist midwife. During your pregnancy, you would be seen regularly by your midwife and you would be offered an obstetrician or specialist clinic to discuss options for mode of birth. Things to consider when planning your mode of birth. How do you feel about previous birth experiences? Reason for your previous caesarean section? Any condition for you or your baby during labour which caused a caesarean section to be recommended, such as labour stop progressing? any conditions in this pregnancy which may affect your route of delivery and previous surgery to the womb. There's evidence to suggest that delivery interval, that is interval between last birth and this birth, of less than 12 months can increase the chance of complications such as scar thinning or opening. Previous vaginal birth can increase the success rate of VBAC. Success rate can be as high as 85 to 90%. If you are planning to have more babies in the future, it may be better to aim for a vaginal birth after caesarean section, as the risks increase in the next pregnancy with each caesarean section. Health issues with current pregnancy for either yourself or baby may influence mode of birth. Your body mass index, BMI. Women who have a BMI of less than 30 have a higher chance of success at VBAC. If you do not have easy access to hospitals, for example, if you live in a rural area in parts of the world and have a limited transport network, you may want to consider moving to be close to the hospital from 36 weeks and stay with a relative or a maternity waiting home. This will not apply to the UK. Elective caesarean section. An elective caesarean section allows you to have a pre-arranged route where your departure and arrival time is planned. This gives you some control on the time of arrival. Though it is pre-arranged, there are occasional delays due to other emergencies. It is a major journey with its risks and the recovery time may be longer. The best time to do the elective caesarean section is the 39th week. If the elective caesarean section is performed too early, then the baby's lungs may not have fully developed. If the elective caesarean section is done too late, you may go into spontaneous labor. Benefits of elective caesarean section for you and your baby. You will have a planned date for the birth of your baby. You will have a smaller chance of the scar on your womb thinning and opening before birth. This is known as uterine rupture. You avoid the risk of labor and rare serious risk to your baby, 
such as brain injury and stillbirth. Risk of elective caesarean section. You have an increased chance of injury to the bowel or bladder. Infections such as wound, urine or chest infections. Increased risk of blood clots in your legs or lungs. Small cut to baby's skin, though this heals very well without need for further intervention. Breathing problem for your baby, particularly if less than 39 weeks. If 39 weeks or more, this risk is between 4 and 5 in 100. At 38 weeks, this is 6 in 100. In future pregnancies, there's an increased chance of uterine rupture, the placenta growing into the scar or over the cervix. This is known as placenta previa or placenta accreta. Benefits of vaginal birth after caesarean section for you and your baby. It increases the chance of a successful vaginal birth in future pregnancies. You may have a quicker recovery and shorter hospital stay. Reduces the risk of caesarean section. Reduces the chance of your baby having breathing problems. Risk of vaginal birth after caesarean section. Uterine rupture. There's a 1 in 200 chance of this occurring if you have had one previous caesarean section. The chance of this increases by two to three times if your labor is induced. You may need an emergency caesarean section during labor. The chance of an emergency caesarean section is 20 in 100 in women having their first baby and laboring for the first time. This increases to 25 in 100 in women trying for a VBAC. Emergency caesarean section can be due to unsuccessful VBAC if cervix stops to dilate or progress of labor stops. The baby becomes distressed and does not cope with labor. You may experience a tear in the vaginal muscles, muscles that control the anus or rectum, known as third or fourth degree tear. The chances of a third or fourth degree tear are 3 in 100 in all vaginal births. There's a chance of serious risk to your baby such as brain injury or stillbirth. You will be seen by your midwife and you may be referred to a specialist clinic or your consultant-led antenatal clinic for counseling and assessment for VBAC or elective caesarean section before 36 weeks. On labor ward, you can have an active labor, you can adopt an upright position, all fours, you can use the birthing ball or the pool. You have the best chance of a successful vaginal birth if you go into labor yourself. If you go beyond your due date, your midwife or obstetrician will discuss your options. We recommend you call labor ward if you go into labor, if your waters break, if you have any constant pain over your scar, significant bleeding, or any concerns with baby's movements you will be offered sweeping of the membrane from 40 weeks. This can make spontaneous labor more likely. You will have one-to-one -one care with a midwife and she will monitor you and your baby when you're in established labor. Continuous electronic fetal monitoring, CTG, is recommended by NICE. We recommend continuous monitoring in all women with a previous caesarean section in labor as your baby showing signs of distress can also be one of the signs that the scar is thinning and opening. You will still be able to mobilize and have an active labor. Wireless or waterproof monitoring can be used which allow you to mobilize more easily and also utilize the birthing pool on labor ward if available. All methods of pain relief are available to women who have had a previous caesarean section. Induction of labor can be with or without medication. Though induction of labor can be offered for VBAC, it is important you have an individual conversation with your obstetrician or specialist clinic to choose the safest mode of induction and delivery specific to you. Mechanical induction. Some units offer intracervical catheter. This is where a balloon catheter is inserted into the neck of the womb to help it open up. Or artificial rupture of membranes, which is a process by which we break your waters. 
These methods do not increase the risk of the scar thinning or opening. Induction of labor, which is when we start your labor for you with prostaglandins and or a hormone drip, oxytocin, and augmentation of labor. This is when we give you oxytocin to help you contract and for the neck of the womb to dilate. These methods are associated with an increased chance of uterine rupture and emergency caesarean section. Some women would prefer to wait for spontaneous labor and have an agreed date of induction of labor or an elective caesarean section. If a woman has not gone into spontaneous labor by 41 weeks, we recommend assessment by a senior obstetrician and discussion for further management plan and risk of stillbirth. To help you make a decision, you may want to use tools or online resources which could predict your individual chance of a successful vaginal birth after caesarean section. 60 to 80% of women who have had a caesarean section will give birth vaginally. For women who have had a previous vaginal birth, this can go up to as high as 90%. Your maternity team will support you to choose the most appropriate mode of birth for you and your baby. You have now reached your final destination on this journey and regardless of the route you took, you should feel very proud of your achievement.